So let's continue our conversation about left ventricular assist devices. And one thing I felt I didn't really stress enough in the first video is that if you have one of these patients come in, they're very complicated, make sure you call your local LVAD center or you call the number on their uh, LVAD because there are so many different kinds of LVADs and they're all very complicated. So call your LVAD coordinator and get help from them. Anyway, let's say you have a patient who comes in. He's brought in by the paramedics as unresponsive and he doesn't have a pulse. And then you look at him and you notice that he's got this thing strapped to his belly with this blue cable coming straight out of his abdomen and it's connected to these two batteries, one on either side of him. And you recognize immediately, ah, he's got an LVAD. And so you didn't feel a pulse and he's unresponsive and you fight your urge to do CPR. You really want to do CPR, but you know, with these LVAD people, I got to be careful. I'm not going to do CPR. So you hold off on that. So what do you do with these patients then? So these patients, they never have a pulse. So you basically have an unresponsive patient. And so that could be due to any reason. They may have had a seizure. They may be hypoglycemic. Or they may be unresponsive because they're in shock, because their heart's not working. So the first thing that I would probably do is listen to their heart. Apparently, this is either a very giant patient or a very small doctor. But you're going to listen to the heart. And what you're listening for is that hum of the LVAD. And you're either going to hear that pump hum or you're going to hear no hum. Now, if you hear no hum, that means this pump isn't working. And this pump is the life-saving thing for this person. So we're in deep trouble here. At this point, with no hum, we need to troubleshoot this issue here. And so having that LVAD coordinator is very important because there's so many different kinds of LVADs and so many different ways to troubleshoot it. But maybe you want to make sure that green light that is on that says everything is working properly. You want to make sure that these battery connections are well made. And there's usually some sort of way to see how much charge is left on each battery because you want to make sure that they're well charged. Some of them, maybe the wife came with them and she brought the wall outlet adapter. So you could try plugging this into the wall. You could make sure that all, this connection here is also very uh, secure. And what if all that, you do all that and there's still no, uh, no hum that is heard? Well, you're not supposed to do chest compressions because as you'll remember, we don't want to compress on the chest and tear this end out of the aorta or tear this end out of the left ventricle. So one thing you can do is check to see if they have any blood pressure. Now remember, they don't have a pulse, so you're not going to have systolic and diastolic, but you can still check a blood pressure. You're going to need to use a manual cuff and a Doppler. And as soon as you start hearing sounds, that would be their mean arterial pressure. So if they have a map, that may be like, say, it's 50, 60, 70, then you know that they're circulating blood. You're just not hearing it, and it may not be from the pump. Maybe their residual heart activity is able to pump just enough blood to get some blood circulating. But if you don't have a map, we have no map, the patient is unresponsive, and we hear no hum, and we tried to troubleshoot all of this, well, your patient is basically dead. So at this point, what do you do? You could tr do abdominal chest compressions, or I guess abdominal compressions. I don't know if that works or not. I don't know if that's been proven to do anything, but I've seen, I've seen and heard people say that. And at this point, I would talk to your coordinator and say, should I start chest compressions at this point and take the risk of dislodging that LVAD from the heart? Because if I do nothing, the patient's going to be dead. If I do something, the patient might be dead, but they also might uh, start circulating blood until we can get the CT surgeons in here to replace this LVAD that's not functioning. So that's in patients with no hum. Now let's say the patient does have a hum. They're unresponsive. And of course, they never have a pulse. You can work them up like any other altered mental status patient. So maybe they're in status epilepticus. Maybe they're having a seizure. Maybe they're, hy uh, maybe they're hypoglycemic. And remember that they are coagulopathic, so if there's any potential of head trauma, scan their head because these guys bleed like crazy. Uh, and they also have GI bleeding, so maybe they're anemic from GI bleeding. They may also have an infection, so maybe 
they are septic from uh, drive line infection, or they could also have an infection at the site of the pump in the pump pop pocket, in which case you better cover them with antibiotics and get CT surgery to go drain that infection. And there are a couple other things that could go wrong. So here we've got my depiction of a heart, right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle, aorta. Now let's put the elevat in. So now blood comes through the left atrium to the left ventricle. It goes into this intake here through the pump, back through these tubes here, up here, and then it goes right into the aorta and out to the body. Okay, so now what else can happen? This all is a foreign body, so it's prone to clotting, despite the fact that they're going to be on Coumadin. So you can get a pump thrombosis, and so the blood is going to try to get through here, but it kind of gets stuck, so the pump is going to start rev up, revving up and get hot. So you may, if you can feel the pump through the skin, you, might, you may be able to feel that the pump is warm, and you might see on the, the system controller if the RPMs are revving up. What do you do about this? Well, you could start by giving heparin if you suspect it. And then I would talk to the Elevad specialist and ask whether TPA would be indicated in these patients. They, of course, can also get PEs in their lungs. And again, you're going to ask the Elevad specialist whether it's okay to give TPA in these cases. Another thing that could happen is what is called an LV suction event, which in essence means that this is sucking way too hard for some reason and it just collapses the, right vent the left ventricle. So the suction controller should detect this, that the RPMs are increasing and lower the RPMs in order to try to prevent this from happening. But just in case it doesn't, talk to your LVAD specialist and they should help you uh, adjust this in order to get the LV uh, unsucked again. Or you might just have to give a bunch of fluids to kind of push through this. And another thing that can happen is uh, if the patient has bad aortic insufficiency, it can set up a closed loop. So blood comes through the left atrium to the left ventricle, in through here, through the pump, then into the aorta. But instead of going up the aorta, it comes back down through here. And then once it comes back through down through here, it goes back into the pump, and you end up getting this big circle here, like this. And so you need to get CT surgery in that case. And the final thing we should talk about that can happen is if something is wrong with the right heart. Now remember, this is a left ventricular assist device. The right ventricle is going on its own. So if something happens to that, then we have a problem because it's the right ventricle that eventually supplies blood to the left atrium and the left ventricle. So maybe the patient is having some sort of dysrhythmia, like uh, V-fib. And remember that a patient can be talking when they have V-fib. They have no pulse and they have no organized cardiac activity, but in this case, it's the pump doing all the work, right? And so maybe the, the pump is pulling all the blood, but it could also be that the V-fib, you know, it's going to affect this side too, and so it's not supplying enough blood to the left side. So you need to cardiovert, you need to shock these guys. And uh, it's safe to shock with the Nalabad, just try not to shock right over the pump. So I would talk to the LVAD coordinator and make sure it's okay and then you defibrillate them and get them back into a perfusing rhythm so now the right ventricle can do its job and supply blood to the left. Uh, you can also have a right-sided MI which then makes this side non-functional and then just like other right-sided MIs you want to use this as the right-sided heart now just as a conduit so fluids give lots of fluids so that you can just push the the blood and all the fluid through here and then eventually get it to the left side and get it circulating through. And get them to the cath lab pronto. So if you have an LVAD patient that is an extremis, uh, that means they're unresponsive and of course they never have a pulse, the first thing you want to do, listen to the pump. If you don't hear a pump hum, that's bad news. That means that it's not working. So work with your Elevad coordinator to troubleshoot the pump. Check to make sure all the lights are on, the, the green indicator light. Make sure all the connections are nice and secure. Make sure the batteries are charged. Okay, now let's say that you do have a pump hum. Then we got a whole bunch of other things to worry about, including your standard causes for altered mental status. So check to make sure the sugar's okay, make sure they're not seizing, etc., etc. There are some certain infections that are going to be a problem, namely 
the drive line and the pump pocket, they tend to bleed and the common places they bleed are in their head and GI bleeding. They can also form clots, namely in the pump as well as having PEs. Consider the LV suction event, in which case uh, you might see high RPMs uh, on the system controller, aortic insufficiency where you form that closed loop, and then right heart problems, namely dysrhythmias and MI. And most importantly, get help. Call that LVAD team. You're going to need a lot of help. You're going to need that LVAD coordinator who's going to tell you how to troubleshoot the pump and how to see if there's an LV suction event. You're going to need CT surgery, especially if there are any infections that need to be drained. Uh, you're going to need cardiology. You might need to talk to them as well if you need to reverse their bleeding or if you want to give them, I mean, reverse their anticoagulation or if you need to treat them with TPA. And if there's no hum and you want to do uh, chest compressions. Remember, that's a Hail Mary pass. This is when the patient's already dead and you've got almost nothing to lose. But I would make sure you ask that LVAD team whether that's something we should do or not. And that's it. That's all I know about LVADs. So please put any questions and, or comments down below. And uh, thanks. Bye-bye.